Hey everyone, thank you all so much for tuning in. Today I wanted to discuss Season 1 of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, the first major update for the game that features a free playable Joker. It also happens to be an update that I found so egregiously frustrating that I don't know if I ever want to play this game again. Now, first let me give a bit of background. I am a huge Arkham fan. I love the Arkhamverse. I think it's within the top three gaming franchises of all time. I liked all the base games, most of the DLC, I was pretty easy to please when it came to Arkham. I actually even liked the base game of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League quite a bit. I certainly thought it was the weakest entry in the Arkhamverse, and there were moments in the story that really felt so cynical that they just didn't work for me at all. The way that they killed off my favorite heroes felt really mean-spirited, and the only reason I was willing to give the narrative leeway was because it felt like we ended at the midpoint. It felt like, okay, there's going to be more narrative post-launch. Similarly, I actually found the gameplay loop to be pretty fun, but very repetitive and very shallow. Once again, I thought, okay, it's a live service game. Post-launch, we're going to get updates that make it feel more varied and interesting. So overall, I was very willing to stick with this game post-launch to see what it had to offer. Not only that, I was hopeful. I was really hoping that Rocksteady had a lot more to introduce narratively and from a gameplay perspective that would really enhance the experience. So launch day finally came, all of the fans of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League took the day off work, excited to experience a free playable Joker, only for the game to be down for like 7 or 8 hours due to maintenance. Once the game's servers were finally back up and running, everyone was kind of appalled by what they found. See, when you boot up the game, you're not treated to a free playable Joker, you're treated to 4 hours of grinding in order to unlock Joker, or you can purchase him for $10. It is a baffling decision, especially after the reaction to the base game. I have no clue whose idea it was to nickel and dime these updates so heavily after such a negative reception to Marvel's Avengers and the base game of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It makes no sense. Outside of Joker, there is some other new content as well, to be fair. You get access to exciting new weapons, and basically the same missions just reskinned in a Jokerized metropolis. You want to go defend Ivy's plants again? Knock yourself out. You want to go collect shards for Toy Man? Go crazy. You want to go into a timed arena where you have to sit and just continually kill thugs? Great. You have to grind from level 0 to level 35, and you may be thinking, oh, well, when I was playing the base game, I got up to, like, level 50. No, this is a brand new rank exclusive to the season. You start at level 0 no matter how much grinding you already did in the launch version of the game. Once you reach level 35, you have the very exciting opportunity to go and complete the Green Lantern boss fight again, except it's reskinned as Brainiac. This is just so uninspired. It's so uninteresting. There is no new story missions. The game is completely dependent on the same endgame missions that we've been playing since launch. Joker gets two cutscenes. One is a motion comic that admittedly looks kind of cool and did a good job setting up the season. But again, it didn't then bleed into a story. It literally just goes back to those same endgame missions that we've already played over and over again. The next cutscene doesn't occur until you unlock Joker. And you get a three minute long cutscene where Joker introduces himself and joins the squad and acts kind of silly. At that point, you can now add Joker to your squad, but there is no new content. So you add him to the squad and then you kind of just have to go and repeat those same missions over and over again to grind that character level up. Now look, I know that there are people where that will be enough for them. They just want more gameplay, they want a new character to level up and grind with, and that's fine. Personally, I'm going into this because I love these characters. I wanted to see some character development. I wanted to see more narrative. I wanted to see these missions take a more interesting turn. I wanted to see how Harley Quinn would react to a character that she was in love with for three games straight suddenly returning from the dead. I wanted to see what that would look like, how that would impact her. Instead, she plays it off as a joke and has absolutely zero reaction to it. Now, I want to reiterate something I alluded to at the beginning of this video, which is that I'm a huge Arkham fan. It's not difficult to please me when it comes to Arkham content, but you have to at least hit the bare bones of why I liked those games. And some people will say, oh, so you just wanted this to be an Arkham clone? You just wanted it to be another Arkham game? No, I was actually a huge proponent and a huge advocate for these games to take a different direction when they were announced. When I saw Gotham Knights get announced as an action RPG, I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey and thought, you know what, if they can bring this kind of scope 
and this type of freedom to me as a player in Gotham City, that will be a legendary gaming experience. And the game lacked the scope of a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It just didn't overly impress me. And when it came to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I'm a fan of games like The Division. I'm a fan of games like Star Wars Battlefront 2. I thought there was a lot of potential there. But it feels like in so doing, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League abandoned everything that many of us loved about the Arkham games. The really compelling narratives. The fact that the world felt alive and lived in and was full of easter eggs and side missions and hidden encounters with classic enemies from the comics. We loved the varied and challenging gameplay that still made you feel empowered. Those predator encounters were some of the best, most innovative stealth I'd seen in that type of game. The maps were so full of life, like I mentioned. They were so full of easter eggs and lore. The combat and the way that the game played felt so exclusive to Batman as a character. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League feels essentially like just another third-person live-service shooter. It doesn't feel unique to these characters or this IP. The base game featured a story that, while very mean-spirited and left me with a sour taste in my mouth, at least had some really fun moments. It at least had some really fun dynamics between these characters. Season 1 strips all of that. It removes everything that worked for me in Suicide Squad and leaves me with repetitive, grindy endgame missions, and they expect this to hold everyone over for the next two weeks until they give a mid-season update, and then that's supposed to hold us over for like three months until they release season two. Some people are still optimistic, and I gotta give those people kudos, because I can't be. I don't think that there's more interesting narratives coming in this game. I think that with season one, that's where you'd really want to come out swinging and show off how high quality your content is going to be going forward. The fact that it is this bare bones and this laughably limited is not a great sign of things to come. And I'm not even mentioning the fact that I can't even continue to progress. All of my missions bugged out. No objective works anymore. And I'm not the only one. I've heard many people say that this game has bugged out for them and pretty much made progression an impossibility. It's especially infuriating after paying $100 for the deluxe edition of this game because I really believed that Rocksteady had some interesting things up its sleeve, especially when it came to its roadmap. The fact that they're still trying to get my money, the fact that they're still trying to nickel and dime free content like a playable character is really pissing me off. It feels like they have very little respect for me and just want direct access to my debit card. I want to make it abundantly clear, too, that I'm not attacking any of this at the day-to-day -day developers. There's some really impressive work in this game's lighting, in its audio design, in a lot of its gameplay mechanics. There's a lot that actually works really well. This game has some of the best facial motion capture I've ever seen in a game. With that being said, so many decisions being made either by Rocksteady or Warner Brothers at the very top have overshadowed some of the really great things within this game. There are just so many missed opportunities here. How cool would it have been if this update had featured all the content it has now, but also a story where you're going after a character like Bane, or Livewire, or Scarecrow, like they're in Metropolis for some reason and you have to go have a boss fight with them. That would at least be narratively interesting. How much cooler would it have been if rather than playing as Joker, we'd been given access to a character like Killer Frost, who doesn't even use guns but has the ability to freeze enemies? How fun would that be if you could hop on a multiplayer server and you're playing as Killer Frost and you freeze enemies and your friend playing as Deadshot shoots them? Like, you, you work almost as a buff to Deadshot and you can team up as the Suicide Squad. That would have been cool. What if the side missions had included characters like Aquaman and Green Arrow or villains like Parasite that you had to go and fight and have dynamic encounters with and you could encounter in the open world? Again, I'm not a difficult person to please when it comes to the Arkhamverse. I just don't feel that this even scratches the bare minimum. I would say that, especially for a full release on consoles, Season 1 of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is by far the worst piece of content that has ever been released under the Arkhamverse banner. I think after the self-admittedly disappointing results of the launch, 
by Warner Brothers themselves. They've said it was a disappointing launch that didn't sell nearly as much as they wanted to. They should have reassessed the trajectory of this roadmap. Heck, they should have done it back when Avengers was failing. But what they should have done is looked at, okay, in season four, we have new cutscenes, we have new narrative. We're going to bump that up to as soon as we possibly can. Okay, we're trying to do it where we're trying to get people to pay $10 for each playable character. You know what? We're just going to give access to those characters for free at the beginning of each update. The reason so many people tuned into this update, and when I say so many, that's an exaggeration. On Steam charts, only about 3,000 people hopped on to play the game on Steam with this update. So not even that many people came back. This is Joker one of Warner Brothers' biggest characters ever. People just aren't interested to tune in for it, and the people that were there were doing so because, hey, complimentary new free playable character, let's see how it goes. If Warner Brothers had really wanted to sell more copies of this game and get a bigger player base, that's what it should have been. They should have given access to the character for free. They should have had more meaningful content, because as it stands right now, I don't think this is going to reignite anyone's interest in the game. And if there are more interesting updates down the line, I think it might be too little too late, unfortunately. I really still hope that this game has a plan that turns it around. But it feels like such a misfire, especially after that negative reception to the game. I still don't understand the decision to nickel and dime everything in this game when you don't even have a big player base to begin with. It's really disappointing that this is the trajectory that this game is going. Like I said at the beginning, I think I'm just done with it. I think I'm going to uninstall it. I have no reason to play it. There's nothing new to see narratively. There's nothing interesting in terms of what I could do with the builds of my characters. And the enemies I'm going up against are just the same purple zits that it, they've always been. So I don't really even see the purpose of making a better build. Just so I can kill more of the purple zits in a cooler way. Okay, fine. I just don't care anymore. This game has completely broken me, and this was someone who had a vested interest in liking it. I'm feeling really frustrated, and I'm feeling like my intelligence has been insulted to a large degree. I do not feel like whoever peddled this content out to me respects me, and again, just wants access to my debit card. All right, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, so I'm going to close it off. But thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Season 1 update for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I do think it's really interesting that there is a vocal minority really pressuring people who dislike it to just not talk about it. Like, don't give criticism. It's like, dude, of course I'm going to criticize an IP that I care about when it's treated badly, in my opinion. Of course I'm going to give my thoughts on that. I'm going to be civil. I'm going to be respectful. I'm not going to insult the people behind it, but I do want to give my honest thoughts. So again, thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.